So I'm here because I think I can save the world with nuclear power. Right now, the world's energy economy is dominated by fossil fuels, but that's untenable. Just look at the air pollution in China. You'd think that nuclear power would be an obvious solution to the problem because it's a well-developed technology that produces large, scalable amounts of electricity, but nuclear leaves us with its own very nasty problem, which is nuclear waste, which is radioactive for hundreds of thousands of years. So imagine a technology that solves both of these problems, the clean energy production and the waste, and this actually exists. I have this nuclear reactor that can run entirely on nuclear waste. It consumes the waste, reducing its radioactive lifetime while simultaneously generating enormous amounts of electricity. There's 270,000 metric tons of high-level nuclear waste that exists worldwide, and no one knows what to do with it yet. Most of this waste is just sitting above ground in spent fuel casks like this, waiting for someone to come up with a solution. We can take this spent nuclear fuel and extract almost all of its remaining energy, which translates into a very, very large amount of electricity. To put some numbers on it, you can take all 270,000 metric tons of spent nuclear fuel that exists worldwide and turn it into enough electricity to power the entire world for 72 years. Powering the entire world for 72 years, even taking into account increasing demand, while simultaneously getting rid of almost all of its nuclear waste. So there's enormous potential here. The reactor units are small enough to be co-located with existing nuclear power plants, so you can consume the waste without it ever having to leave the site. And this plant can also run on very low enriched fresh uranium fuel, which lets it unlock 75 times more electricity from a given amount of uranium than is possible with conventional reactors. The basis of our approach is a liquid-fueled nuclear reactor that's powered by uranium dissolved in a molten fluoride salt. The design is actually based on earlier work conducted in the 50s and 60s at the Oak Ridge National Lab in Tennessee. That's where these images are from. They were able to successfully build and operate a similar plant called a molten salt reactor that ran on fresh uranium fuel and they showed that it had many safety benefits. But the project was canceled pretty quickly thereafter because it was bulky, had a low power density, and it couldn't be justified on its great safety grounds because the world hadn't yet experienced Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, or Fukushima. What we call nuclear waste isn't actually waste at all because it has a tremendous amount of energy left in it. Conventional reactors, which shown in the figure here, are fueled by pellets of solid uranium oxide that's held in place by a thin metal cladding. The metal has to be thin so that it doesn't absorb too many neutrons, but having a thin metal cladding means that it's readily damaged by the radiation that's within the reactor core. And the accumulating damage limits the amount of time that the fuel can spend in the core to about three or four years. But the problem with this is that it means you can only extract around 4% of the energy you could conceivably get out of the nuclear fuel. So that's, in a way, why the nuclear waste is so dangerous, because there's so much energy that's left in it. What we do instead in this design is take out the spent fuel assemblies from the conventional reactor, remove the metal cladding, and dissolve the fuel pellets into a molten fluoride salt. We don't have any cladding, any metal framework in our reactor, nothing to get damaged, so we can leave the fuel in our reactor for essentially as long as it takes to extract all of its remaining energy. And the cool thing is, is that this also reduces our radioactive lifetime by a very large amount. So conventional reactor waste is radioactive for hundreds of thousands of years. The majority of the waste coming out of our plant is only radioactive for a few hundred years, which is still a long time, but humans can build things, structures and repositories that last for a few hundred years. So that makes it solvable. This is a, a very rough schematic of what the reactor looks like. So up on the far left, you have the primary loop that has the molten fuel salt flowing through it. On the very far left, you have the reactor core, where the fuel salt is in a critical configuration, which means you have a large, stable number of nuclear fission reactions that are generating a great deal of heat. This heat is carried from the primary loop through an intermediate loop and into a power production loop, where it powers a turbine that drives a generator that produces electricity. So right side of the plant is all very standard. The main difference between conventional nuclear reactors and molten salt reactors is that molten salt reactors use a liquid fuel rather than a solid fuel. What makes my company's design different from the other earlier molten salt reactors, the ones that were abandoned in the 60s and 70s? The main two changes we make 
are to modify the materials used in the moderator and the fuel cell. A moderator is used to slow down neutrons to the right energy level so that they're more likely to induce fission. The early molten salt reactors used graphite as a moderator, which worked. It was able to go critical, but it, gave, it made the cores very large and bulky, low power density, expensive. We came up with the idea of instead using zirconium hydride as a moderator, which is much more effective at slowing down neutrons and lets our core be a lot more compact, power dense, and cheaper. The other thing we changed was the salt. So the early molten salt reactors used what's called flyb salt, which is a mixture of lithium fluoride and beryllium fluoride. Using the salt meant that you had to enrich the uranium-235 up to 33% to 93% uh, uranium-235, which is not commercially available because it's very close to weapons grade. So what we did instead was switch it to a different type of salt, lithium fluoride and uranium fluoride, that lets us run on the very low enriched fresh fuel or the spent nuclear fuel. I talked before about the safety benefits of this type of plant. In a conventional nuclear reactor, you need a constant supply of electric power to pump water over the core to keep it from heating up catastrophically. That's what happened at Fukushima. But in a liquid-fueled reactor, you don't need that at all. What we have instead is what's called a freeze valve that's at the bottom of the primary loop of the plant. And the freeze valve contains a plug of salt electrically cooled so that it's frozen solid. If you lose electricity through an accident, say, you lose cooling to the freeze valve, it melts, and all the salt from the primary loop drains into an auxiliary containment. When it's in the auxiliary containment, it's not near any moderator, and also just based on its geometry, it's no longer critical. So it's not generating nearly as much heat and the small amount of heat that it does produce can be sunk by natural convection loops that don't require electricity. Over the course of a few hours, the freeze is solid, so when it fails, it fails into a frozen mode, not like a liquid mode. This means that our reactor is what's called walk-away safe. So if you lose electric power, and even if there aren't any operators on site, it'll coast to a stop and stay that way indefinitely. The technology is great, but to get these built, it also has to be cheap, of course. And luckily, we have that going for us, too. If we use current construction techniques, it's about two-thirds the cost of conventional nuclear power right now. And even more importantly, we can be cheaper than coal. And these numbers will improve as we move towards a more modular design and other more advanced construction techniques. We've raised significant funding so far, in addition to money from the US Department of Energy, filed patents on our design, and gotten a thumbs up on the technology from our great advisory board that includes the former chief technology officer of Westinghouse and the head of MIT's nuclear engineering department. With this design, we've solved nuclear safety and waste problems, we've beaten coal, and we've made this safe, clean, and affordable answer to what humanity needs for energy. Mm -hmm.